This is my life. This is my testimony. This is my story. You know, we can learn a lot when we look back at our youth. I remember my father one time said, Robert is a good boy, but he needs to surrender his life to Christ. My mother, she put her hand on my shoulder and she said, son, you need to surrender your life fully to Jesus Christ. And you know something, in my heart of hearts, I knew she was right. But I said to my mom, I said, mom, too many prophecies are not fulfilled yet. Jesus can't come yet, so I've got plenty of time. So isn't that interesting? I knew the Bible and I knew what was right and wrong, but I had an indifference, which is the very nature of sin, that would not surrender. And I remember sitting in an airplane, looking out of the window down at the clouds, and I thought this thought in my heart, if this plane would crash, I have enough time to pray my prayer and say, Jesus, forgive me for my sin and receive me, and I would be saved. So I thought that it's all in my hands at which time I could be saved until one Friday night, we were on our way to a movie theater and we were a bit late. So we were going very, very fast, over a hundred miles an hour. And there was an unexpected corner. And as I went through the corner way too fast, the car lost control and shot across the, uh, the, the, the road. And another car came the other way who also was speeding and we collided. And the car that I was in was completely torn in two. And it all went so quickly and so fast, I forgot to pray. I forgot I need to get myself right with God. I was too busy with the experience. And I woke up in the hospital a few days later with my neck broken in two places as I was going in and out of consciousness, had a vision and I saw Jesus. And he asked me, he said to me, Robert, what have you done for me in your life? And you know, I couldn't answer him. And it wasn't that I hadn't done good things. I'd done many good deeds. However, when I stood before Jesus, I was speechless because the very thing he died for, I had never given him. He died for me, but I'd never given myself to him. I'd done a lot of things for him, but not surrendered my life to him. And when my father walked into the hospital room, I almost started choking out of the shock of seeing him. But he walked up to me with compassion and he said to me, Robert, don't you think it's the grace of God that you are not dead, that you're not completely paralyzed? And you know, something had happened, perhaps with that vision, perhaps with the whole experience. I don't know, do we need to come to the end of ourselves before we realize that without God, what is there? What is there worth living for? My dad said to me, come, let's pray and go home. And he laid his hand upon me and he said, thank you, Jesus, that you're always with us and that by your stripes, Robert is healed. And something happened. Something happened. I didn't understand it at the moment, but new life came into me. Jesus Christ, with his spirit, came to dwell inside of me to reconcile me to God, to give me a new beginning, a new life. And all of a sudden there was hope. There was faith. There was love. There was joy. Everything that we could ever desire from God comes to us through Jesus Christ. When I walked out of that hospital in, 19, in September of 1978, my father made a statement to me. He said, Robert, I'm sure you now know your life is not your own. I don't know exactly at that moment what my father meant. Perhaps he meant you should have died and you didn't, so God gave you another chance. I don't know what he meant, but to me today, it's like the Apostle Paul says in Galatians 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ Jesus. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I have in this earthen body is not of myself. It's a gift of God. To me, that is reality. My Christian life is by faith in Jesus Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. And I know that the life that keeps me in fellowship with God, the life that keeps me free from sin, 
the life that encourages me to love, to forgive, to help, to bless, and all the goodness, it all comes through Jesus Christ in me. And I'm so grateful today to know what it means to have Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. And I'm so grateful for what He's done for me. And I have faith for today, not just that God is able to keep me from stumbling and present me without fault in the presence of His glory at the coming of the Lord Jesus, but I have faith for other people. I have faith for any person today because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I just praise Him with all my heart. Thank you.